welcome to this lecture. In the last lecture, we had discussed about uh, the class, the syntax, the UML syntax, how it is represented in UML and also how it is instantiated into objects and we are trying to look at some examples of instantiation because uh, we were discussing about the inheritance relation and we said that inheritance is very easy to program in Java. We use the extends keyword and then it is done, but then we are trying to make some more sense of it. Now, let us just uh, proceed with what we are doing last time. We were discussing the example of uh, rectangle and box. We said that uh, rectangle has uh, length and width and as we define the inheritance relation with the keyword extends, implicitly the box inherits the length and width and also we define a new attribute height. And once we create an object, we create my rectangle using the keyword new and with the parameters 5 and 3 which are basically the length and width and uh, we create a box using the new keyword and the object that we get the reference to that is my box. But if we really visualize that, we will see that the actual object is here which has its uh, attribute length and width, but then we have got this convenient handle here. We call it as the object reference and that is my rectangle and we carry out all operations on the object through this uh, object reference or the handle which is my rectangle. Similarly, when we instantiate the box with the new keyword, we get uh, the object reference my box which just points to the box object and the box object internally has this uh, length width which are the inherited attributes set to 6 and 5 and we have this uh, new attribute height which is uh, defined here and uh, this value is set to 4. Now, let us look at some more examples. This is an example of uh, feline inherits from both mammal and quadruped. Whereas, lizard is an animal which is derived from quadruped. Tiger, lion and puma are the derived classes from the base class feline. But see here, feline is uh, used as multiple inheritance, it has two base classes, the mammal and quadruped and we had said that programming multiple inheritance is a bit troublesome. In C++, we use things like virtual base class and so on when we have multiple inheritance to avoid the problem of repeated inheritance where we get multiple copies of the same attribute. But in Java, the things are a bit simpler in that multiple inheritance is not allowed, only single inheritance and you can implement an interface class. 
Now, let us uh, look at this example. We have uh, car as a base class, it has some attributes and operations and then we have uh, derived class chassis, engine and door. Is this a ok class relation? Does it appear correct that we have car as the base class and chassis, engine and door are the derived classes? Do you find it acceptable relation or is there any problem? Okay, it is not really correct because uh, we had said that whenever there is a generalization, we should be able to express this in the form of a is a relation. We should be able to say chassis is a car, engine is a car, and door is a car, which is looks odd, it is not correct. So, it is not uh, correct, it is a wrong generalization, it violates the EJ or a EJ kind of uh, heuristic that we had uh, mentioned earlier. Whenever we want to test uh, inheritance hierarchy that whether it is ok, we can express that using the EJ heuristic to find that whether it is a correct generalization. This is not correct. The classes here have different relation. The car is an aggregate of chassis, engine and door. Car consists of actually, a car consists of chassis, engine and door. It is not an inheritance relation. Now, let us uh, look at uh, some more inheritance relation. The base class here is the library book. And there are derived classes, which are issuable single volume, issuable book set, reference single volume book and reference book set. But we can use a discriminator to help us organize this uh, cl class hierarchy in much better by using these discriminators issuable and reference. These are the issuable books, issuable single volume and book set. These are the reference books, the reference single volume and the reference book set. And we call this, we write on the inheritance arrow here, we write the discriminator and allows us to group classes based on some semantic category. Now, let us uh, proceed further. So, these are the discriminators and uh, before we look at the other relations, inheritance is simple, easily programmed using the extends relationship in Java. It uh, promotes reuse, we define it once and uh, reuse in the derived classes, but let us be aware that uh, if we use the inheritance relationship too often, we have a tendency to reuse the uh, to use the inheritance relationship. As we proceed in this course that indiscriminate use can result in poor quality programs. We will have several examples, we will see what problems actually arise. 
we will see this in more, we will examine this problem in more detail. We will see that as the class hierarchy becomes deeper, the attributes and methods are many attributes and methods are inherited in the lowermost or the leaf level classes and it has too many methods and attributes typically happens in a library class once we inherit we do not know what are its methods it might be having too many methods might be having too many attributes. So, that is one part of the problem there are other problems as we proceed we will see, but at this point we will just uh, remember that inheritance is good it is simple promotes reuse, but we need to be careful in using the inheritance and the problems that arise we just now have a hint that uh, it uh, leads to tight coupling of the methods large number of methods and it breaks encapsulation and so on, but uh, the exact problems we will realize as we proceed in this course. Now, let us look at the association relationship between classes. We said that there are four types of relation between classes that can exist. The first one is inheritance relation between classes easily programmed. We just use the extends when one class is uh, derived from another class we just use extends and we have this uh, implementation of the inheritance relationship. Now, let us look at the other relationship we start with association relationship. The first question is that uh, can you give some examples of association relationship and then we will address this question that how it is implemented in program generalization is through the extends keyword but how do we implement the association relationship? Is there a keyword? No, we do not have a keyword, but then we can program it, we will just see how to program it. Let us first uh, understand the implication of the association relationship when one object is associated with another object for example, let us say a student registers in a course. So, the student and the course are associated because the student has registered. And in this case in the student class we should be able to identify or print out what are the courses he has registered, what are the names of those courses, what are the credit structure, what are the syllabus of these courses we should be able to print out. And to be able to do that we should be able to communicate with the classes with which the student is. Uh, associated and also on the other hand for each course we should be able to if this is the student the student class and the course we say the student is associated with the course we represent in a straight line and we write that the student registers. And we write this uh, reading arrow say that the student registers in a course and the meaning of this is that the student should be able to from the student class we should be able to identify all the courses he has registered, we should be able to have some way to identify the courses, what are their syllabus, 
what is their credit structure. And similarly, on the course side, we should be able to identify who are the students who have registered in this course. And uh, to be able to do that, that the scores should be able to identify who are the student and the student should be able to, the student class, we should be able to identify what are the courses he has registered. We should have the reference, the object reference of the student stored somehow in the course class. Only then we will be able to identify who are the students registered. Similarly, on the student side, we should have the course object references stored inside the student class. Then only we will be able to identify what are the courses with which the student has registered. This is an example of a binary relation. We can think of many more examples of association relations, but uh, we will see that in general it can be n array that is it can be one array that is one class associated to itself. This is a two array or a binary, we can have three array or ternary, four array or quaternary and so on. Now, let us uh, look at more examples. This is in a home theatre system. We have a TV object. The TV class is associated with the VCR class. And to be able to program it, the VCR must contain the reference for the TV class to be able to invoke the methods of the TV class. Similarly, may be necessary for the TV class to store the reference of the VCR class. And similarly, the VCR may be associated with the remote because the remote commands the VCR. The remote is associated with the VCR and the VCR is connected to the TV. This is the representation, this is a line, name of the association is connected to, this is the reading direction, we read VCR connected to TV and we we'll look at the multiplicity, one one that is written here, little letter and here look at it is a unidirectional association, the remote is associated to VCR but not vice versa. And the name of the association relationship is commands and reading direction is given here in the form of this arrow and we say that, say that the remote commands be share that is how we read it. But when the classes are associated, the objects of the class, they are actually linked to the object of another class. The pupil class is associated to the tax file. We represent this by pupil, okay, we have it here. The pupil class is associated with the tax file. The meaning of this in the object space is that for every object here, on the people class, we have a corresponding tax file here to which it is associated. For this object, we have this tax file, but it may so happen that for some objects on this, we do not have a corresponding tax file here. It allows, if we have this kind of relation between two classes, it may so happen that some of the objects here do not have a corresponding object here, but at most one object 
on this class, one object of this class is associated to one object on the other class. Now, we may have also multiple association that an object of this class is associated to multiple objects of this class. We express that use the star relation here. Woman is the mother of many persons and if we look at the object space, these are the persons Bhim, Yudhishthir and Arjun and Kunti is the mother of these persons here. Now, let us uh, elaborate the UML syntax a little more. We said that a straight line indicates association relationship between class A and class B, but we can also write the role of the class A in this association relationship and role of class B in this association relationship. Now, let us uh, elaborate that with the one example that a person works for a company. We have this diagram here, person is a class, company is another class, they are associated, we have this uh, straight line drawn between them, where the name of the association the reading direction here and we also have written the roles of these two. In this works for association, we have company as the employer and the person as the employee. The role of the person in works for is employee, the person works as the employee in the works for and the company is the employer in this association. So, in the UML syntax, we can optionally write the name of the role in addition to the name of the relation, association relation and the reading direction. Now, let us try to read this. How do we read this? The reading direction is this. Up to five books, okay. A book is borrowed by A member. When we read it, we start A here, single book here. This gives the multiplicity. Single book is uh, borrowed by a member and a book is borrowed by a member. Okay, I should have 0 here a written star here, it should have been 0 to 5. A library member borrows 0 to 5 books. This is 0 here not star. So, 0 to 5. A library member borrows 0 to 5 books, a book borrowed by single member. Let me repeat this that uh, in the association relationship, we represent by this multiplicity here that each book here is uh, associated with how many objects of the other class. And therefore, we always read a book borrowed by a library member. We can read it in the other direction by reversing this phrase here. We say that a library member borrows 0 to 5 books. Now, let us look at another example. How do we read this? Please try to read this diagram. 
as I said earlier to read this diagram, we need to first read in the direction of the arrow and we identify one object of this class is associated with how many objects of this class. So, we read a lion eats many humans and on the other direction we read a human is eaten by many lions. Let me read that again. A lion eats and this is the multiplicity. A lion eats many humans and here on this side we read a human is eaten by many lions. We will have more examples, but then I hope that the multiplicity that given here or here is clear that it identifies the multiplicity given here identifies one object is associated with how many objects of this class and this multiplicity indicates one object of this class is uh, associated with how many objects of this class. We will have few more practice problems and also we will look at how the association relationship is implemented in Java and also we will look at the unary and ternary associations with more examples. We will stop here because we are at the end of the class, we will continue in the next class. Thank you.